Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. If it was me, that bitch would be walking around bare flat. Hey, no, no, no. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, yeah. connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm your under-the-weather host this week, oh. Tiz, and I'm joined by... The other third of The Partners, this is Padawan here. I'm rolling up, and yes, we can hear you face over there on that side. Yeah. <laughs> I don't got fancy shit to say about myself, so I'm going to let y'all know that I am along with... That's my radio voice. Yep. 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 It's me. It's face. I'm in a damn play. It's I ain't running shit this week. No oh, Mason. No. no Mason. It's face. Hey, bars. Yeah, man, make sure y'all support. If you uh, got Cash App, go ahead and uh, hit the link below or hit the <laughs> Cash App below. If you got Buy Me A Coffee, go ahead and hit the Buy Me A Coffee below if you want to support. Otherwise, man, we are the partners, man. We are here for another week. Yeah. We are your weekly podcast on all things podcasty. Um, yeah, hey, man. How, how y'all doing? Uh, the ad libs got me weak. I can't explain shit. I'm living, I'm breathing, I'm healthy. I'm not constipated, so can't complain or whatever. Not again, yo. Not again. Not again. I don't oh, need there to know much for constipation. I don't need to know about it. Sir, you all right? What the hell? All right, that's how we starting off this week. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I don't even need to know whether you are or not. That's your business. What the hell? What the <laughs> I'm I'm just saying. Back in the day, constipation used to kill motherfuckers. I'm just saying I'm proud I ain't constipated shit. What? It's 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 bad to be in good health nowadays. I can't brag on my good health. That's what we doing in 2024. You could have just, just said you was in good health, my boy. I don't need to know whether or not it relates to constipation. That is a bit much. But all right. Face is not constipated this week, everybody. Yeah, he ain't shitty and shit. You know. You know. <laughs> Uh, I apologize for the awkward silence, but I really don't know what to say after that. Um, how y'all doing this week? Other than that, no, please don't talk about the constipation. I'm so glad it's the weekend. Um, uh, three, three day weekend. Not for me, for real. But I don't get to. I don't have to wake up early in the morning on a on a Monday. So it's that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? God has blessed me. I had a ticket. I found some checks that I found some checks that I didn't realize I have. And with the God's graces, I was able to pay for that speed of ticket. Well, it's processing as we speak. Come on, come on with come on with new checks. That is and, definitely a blessing. And I I I spend I wake up every day you got looking excuse, the internet this evening. It's storming out this bitch. Yeah. It's all right. I, I know that it's a storm all up the East Coast, so uh, face may blink in and out, but that doesn't mean he's not here. Just means he's on his way back. Uh, tornado watches yeah. and shit, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's, been a, it's been a weird week with the weather. All in all, man, I am awesome. I wake up every day looking half my age, you know what I'm saying, and my bitches love me. So, I'm happy. All right, which one of y'all put the thumbs down button? Cause I, I, I didn't do that. It look, it's this. I'm like, mystery, who is that? Who is it's that? This mystery producer that just keep popping. I didn't up. ask for that, and we have nobody that's live with us, so I don't know who's don't doing know. it. He, he the motherfucker disagreed. Well, with damn. I said. Excuse me for uh, 
pointing out that uh, weather is fucked up. I'm sorry. Oh, maybe but don't, you don't, don't do me like that. Yeah, that maybe mean. they they disagree with the weather. But well, I, fuck you too. Yeah, I, I I okay. So yeah, y'all can't if you if you listening to this, you might not see it, but it's like these weird emojis that keep popping up above my head. Yeah, they and, keep, uh, last week they they made this nigga have balloons on the back of his head. And yeah, so you, I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? I, it's a I ghost in the shell. Nothing. It's a ghost I don't in like the machine. It. I don't like it. I don't like. It. I don't like this weird uh machine energy, and uh I have nothing to do with it. It's not even my fault. It's, it's AI, yo. It's the AI dog that's taking yeah, over. Yeah, that this AI shit. can go the in Matrix by the and the X Men warned us about this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just the first steps and whatnot. They start putting the. Ain't he did nothing yet? I'm gonna say some shit that might get a thumbs down, but that won't it. I'm trying to look out for my homeboy. Well, maybe it was that it was just disagreeing with the weather. Because the weather has been bad. It better disagree with the weather because the weather been bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. weather been, uh, horrible. Very much so. so uh, yeah. Face, how you doing this week? Yeah. He's yeah, y'all. Yeah. I've been having all the time. So shit, I can't complain. See? Yeah. Well, all right. We'll take yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Take that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely take that. Um, I don't want to waste nobody's time, and I definitely don't want to waste the listeners' time. Have y'all? I, I meant to bring this up last week. Have y'all seen the tiniest, the tiny uh video with Ti where he was uh going live and then he happened to flip the camera I, around? I, I I thought it was a gargoyle at first. Uh, so said, that's what, thought that's it was they've been, they been joking T.I. Well, they've been joking <laughs> Tiny literally, literally and putting her you face. thought it was what? Hold on. What did you say, Faith? I think you said a car roll. That was a good cartoon back in the day. It was. <laughs> but that is <laughs> not a good <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. So if you missed it somehow, if you were somehow under a rock, T.I. was going live in the past uh, three weeks and he was basically talking about whatever. And then he flipped the camera to his wife. And his yeah. wife has, his wife looked just like the Quaker Oats lady. The Quaker Oats man. Like I was like, diabetes? Diabetes. Oh man, speaking of Quaker Oats. Diabetes! If, hey, don't buy anything from Quaker Oats. They got like E. coli poisoning and shit in the, in Quaker Oats. Now that you brought it up, that's what I heard in these. Well, shows. don't mm -hmm. buy Quaker Oats, y'all. Mm -hmm. Don't get your oatmeal on. Yeah, if you see that scary man with that hat and that Puritan hat on the brand and stuff, don't buy those grits. Don't buy those grits. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, well, let me, I'm about to Google this. That's for me because I don't eat grits. Now I'm about to Google this. Ti went oh, live. Nope. Won't eat dirt. I'm a yeah. I'm gonna be that nigga. Uh, I don't eat grits, tiny. so I've never eaten grits. I've never been a fan of nope. cream of wheat. I don't really like oatmeal. Mm -hmm. I don't like mm -hmm. cereals. I've um, never eaten a grit in my life. Only grits I know is dirt, and I'm not eating. Yeah, that. yeah, I'm not a fan mm -hmm. of the the mushy shit. Uh, yeah, if you I'm give not, me some shit, like I'll eat some. I'll eat some hash browns or some spud, but I ain't about to fuck with no uh, no grits or no harmony or no oatmeal or no oat or no oatmeal. Like I, none of that shit calls my. Yeah, I'm good on that. I'll I'll take the L I'm on that. I, I know it's a lot of people that like grits. I take the L too to the face, but I don't give a fuck what you put in them. I don't want them. You can have that shit. That's the part of the breakfast I will not eat. I don't care if it's brunch or breakfast or lunch or dinner. I'm not eating that. What is that going on behind you, Pat? You are. Right? Uh, I got. Uh, I like to microwave my blunts. 
Okay, I was like, what is the fuck is going on? Like, this nigga got like a missile on his back? What is that? Oh, shit, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, the microwave on your back? Well, I was thinking the missile on my back would be even cooler than that. But no, I was microwaving my blunt uh, face mob. You know how you microwave the blunt? And then for some reason, it just seems to have a better uh, smoking experience with that. It's like a... uh, Oh, like you got to be slapping a bit. Pause. Yeah, yeah. Pause. Very much so. Yeah. No diddy. Yeah, we ain't. No, take that, take that. Uh, 2024. Um, my question to y'all, though, is based off of the tiny video, even though she looked like the Quaker Oats man or the Smoker Robinson, um, what are y'all thoughts on roasting celebrities? When they're not actually performing, like they're not performance ready, they're not out here trying to be out here, but they get caught in a a camera angle or a camera view that's like unflattering. What's y'all thoughts? What makes them What makes them different from any other person that would joke on? We go to the store and joke on random people how they look. All people record time. people every day in, in, in grocery stores. So what, what makes these people that get paid millions of dollars to be in the public light any different when they're they're not getting paid? Up, oh, you should be more of a target because now you're a regular person. Mm-hmm. Realize these people are just regular people, and their their jobs pay them a, a lot more than regular people jobs do. So I can give a fuck how you feel about getting roasted. Motherfuckers roasted me. You get roasted too. You're a human being. This ain't that. Once again, let's reflect on my, my 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 past video. This ain't the age of feelings no more. That was last year, the year before. Get out your feelings. Shit. Realize it's reality. People talk about Jesus. You ain't better than Jesus, did you? So keep moving forward. I know. I my mom man. always told me when I leave the house, I should be presentable. Keep my drawers clean and keep my face good. If your mama ain't tell you the same thing, go. I'm sorry. But when I leave the house, I'm presentable. Because I never know what yep. may happen. I may end up in the hospital, and I don't want to look like Booker Sugar in the hospital. So I'm the I'm, shit when I leave the house. I'll make sure I, I, I'm presentable when I leave my home. I'm a roll with face on this one. Uh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, I definitely think it's a, it's something to being presentable when you leave the house. Um, but I'm not. You know how you know. You know how you know. No, no, but, but if I'm in the house, like, like, all right, so, so this is what I would say. But they were live, so technically. If I was live. famous, right? I don't ever want to be famous. I don't mind being rich. But fame is not something that I'm chasing. What I will say is this. If I know that it's a camera around, I'm either going to make sure the person that's filming don't film me if I'm not prepared for the camera or I'm going to make sure I'm camera ready. Whatever that means for me. I don't know what that means for women. Um, I'm a man. So for me, it's just making sure that my lock cap ain't on and uh, making sure I got some type of a decent haircut. But I do recognize that for women, it's a bit more planning that goes into it. And that's fine. I'm not mad at that or nothing. Like, I think that's normal. But I do think that there should be a... Like, you knew your husband was coming with the camera. You chose this life. Either either tell him, "Don't, don't turn that shit on me. Or... Be ready for whatever you look like, cause you look like Smoking Robinson. I'm cruising mm-hmm. on a Sunday afternoon. Now let me say this: like, I'll be the first to say, it. like you look Everybody just like Smoking. Everybody got their own taste, but if you gonna get joked on, you're an adult. Deal with it. You feel me? Everybody in this life has been joked on as a child. 
has dealt That's with it, has learned how to move past it, process it, and you should be self-aware and know your flaws and mishaps and be comfortable with yourself by now. If you are not, Jeez. technology has made ways for you to be to get comfortable with yourself. So you if someone too, does choose to joke on you, you can move past it. But if you're still in the mental and emotional state where you can't deal with jokes from the outside people that may not agree with how you look to you, Stay your ass in the goddamn I house. Look to you. I stay, stay away from all right. cameras, all windows, and all screens. I think that's key right there. How you look to you. Oh, you can the just grow up, man. It's called be an adult. <laughs> I don't know what either one of you said. Y'all spoke oh, at the oh, same you say time. Oh, did you say face? What'd you say a face? Bob. Face mob. Yeah. What'd you say at the end? Yep. <laughs> Grow up here <hell, laughs> and be an adult. Yeah. 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 Grow up here. That's important. Pat, what'd you say? I said in the immortal words of Cat Williams, because if I get famous off of this and, and then I say it and and then I don't at him, he's gonna he gonna call me out on that shit or Shannon Sharp. So in the mortal words of Cat Williams, it's called self-esteem. How can I fuck up esteem of fucking self, you simple bitch? Self-esteem. Yeah. And, and as a celebrity. You signed up for this shit, bitch. This is the life you chose. I seem to say this phrase every once every year, but that's the, this is the life you chose, bitch. Before you even met T.I. Well, I don't know when exactly you met T.I., but before T.I. was even famous, you were in Escape. You were the light-skinned bitch in Escape. You know the responsibility of being the light-skinned bitch in a group in the 1990s? Do you know the responsibility <laughs> of being a light skinned bitch in the 1990s? Yeah. Do you yeah. know what that means? Like this not it's not like the light skinned bitches that Cat Williams that was talking about um that you get assigned to. You are a hood star. You know every every 90s movie have that light skinned love interest and shit. You know what I'm saying? The responsibility of being a light-skinned woman from 1990s is very high. You should be already trained in this shit. You should be. I'm sorry they didn't pay you because the mu music industry don't pay everybody at all. But you should be trained. You've been on Amen. TV before. Amen. You had a whole no you had a whole TV show. You agree with this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you 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 agree with this shit. Like that's you okay get your shit together you know what i'm saying like yep like you know home you is not out you you know what i'm saying right now home is out me at indeed. the same time because i'm, I'm at home and i'm really homey right now paul uh and i i don't I don't really know how really homey is a pause, but it sounds pausey. So, and so do pausey. So, um, cerebral pause. No, never mind. Um, anyway, <laughs> cerebral, cerebral pausey. Anyway, um, pull up, pull up, reel up, reel up. Don't go there. This is what happens when. I got you get ADHD and you smoke a blunt, but yeah, it's also yeah, you know, talk about them. them, them. Mm -hmm. Look, it's your fault, okay? All right, and you got money, man. Whatever fucking thing flaw you got, you can get rid of that flaw. You can have a whole nother face, you can have a whole nother body. Ask Nicki Minaj, ask Lil Kim. Lil Kim now is not the same Lil Kim. It's not wait, wait. Now, look him before is different than Illuminati Kim. Amen. Right? Amen. Illuminati Kim look like right. them weird Bangkok bitches and hang and, and hangover. The Bangkok bitches. What? No, you don't no no no. Yeah, the she look like 
<laughs> yeah, man, that's what the fuck she looked like in the face. Never attractive. Ding ching dang ding wang wang dang ding dang ding dang ding dang 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 she done fucked around and had a whole changed her face into a light skinned Asian bit. Dang. <laughs> the motherfucker says. I know I'm probably gonna get canceled a lot off of the shit that I said right now. But it's hey. okay. I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck is transracial. Bitch, you are either black or white or Asian or whatever you are, but we ain't about to do that. Something we else. are not about to do that. We are hey, not hey, about to do that. H Rachel Dolezal. Rachel Dolezal. No, Rachel Dolezal was a white woman that wanted to be black. We ain't about to do that. Iggy I ain't Azalea. about to. I ain't. I'm not letting nobody go in this <laughs> era. Iggy was a white woman that wanted to be black. Keep it going. Amber, um, what is that bitch? The bald head bitch. Amber Rose. Oh, Amber She's Rose. an Italian bitch that wants to be black. That's why she got that ass. Because Italian bitches she thick. have asses. She thick. She thick. Italian, don't get Italian me wrong. Bitch, that, that's thick. spaghetti. Be oh. going right to their ass. Huh? Sweet baby Pause. Jesus. Pause. She is. She is very thick. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Oh my God. Um, sweet baby Jesus. But she's Maybe still black. She's still not black. Now, if she got a black daddy, I'm a roll with her. Shit. But I go off the old school rules. Like, I'm still on that. Like, if you ain't got a black daddy, then you, whatever you is, you're going to roll black. with that. And white. that's what you are. And God bless you. The rules say that if you don't look black, you white. What was your daddy? <laughs> that's my question. What was your daddy? Earl Jenkins, your daddy. Earl you Jenkins. black. Oh god damn. You might be. That's but if you oh. it, but if you in if you Enzio oh, Alamore, your mama well then you. uh oh, you mama. Italian bitch. You white. You white. I'm gonna go with that. I ain't about to play with these games. We ain't about to play these games. Like I ain't got the time for it. Nor look, the man, energy to look I'm it up. Joking. Oh, I'm yeah. just gonna say, uh, Amber Rose, she's a thick ass white woman mm. to me. Mm -hmm. That's what she's always been, and that's what she's gonna always be. And I I'm, I'm gonna stand down. I'm gonna stand on that. She's a thick ass white woman. I ain't I mad at her thickness. Is. Her thickness is amazing. It, uh -huh. it is pretty uh, substantial. Her mind on the other um, damn, I mean, it's a little fucked up. But yeah, 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 I ain't never seen her mama. I don't know her mama, but her. By herself. Mm -hmm. God bless America. Mm -hmm. That's one building. But don't you claim? Don't you claim my race? Don't you say you black? Don't you do that, uh, uh, ma'am? Mm -hmm. If we go to court today, what they gonna see yet? A white woman. Femin the feminists be acting like they never mind. You know they in the front line. Now, with feminists, I don't even listen to. I don't even listen to feminists or misogynists. I just listen to people who got some good common sense. I, that I that other know. shit, you you end up in a whole muck. I used to listen to reminisce, but then she cheated on Papoose, so I don't even be listening wasn't to her. Reminisce over you, my God. Nah, look hard. We're gonna get to there. <laughs> um, why are we talking about platforms, right? All right, we talking about platforms that Not perpetuate or speak about celebrity news and celebrity gossip and celebrity pictures. <coughs> I told y'all I was under weather. Um, does the podcast space, right, does it have room for up and coming? Live and then we saw time. Um, you just what, 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 what? I tried to Google something at the same time. Yeah, um, don't Google, don't Google right now because I'm, I'm about to segue. Oh, yeah. What I would like to ask is, <clears throat> excuse me, does the podcast space have room for up and coming teams, or has it been oversaturated by celebrities looking for another bag? Now you may go on TI. 
Okay. Um, no, I'm not. I, I would say yes. It has definitely been oversaturated with nothing but celebrities. As soon as they figure out that they could get a bag off of it, it has not has been nothing but celebrity after celebrity coming out with a new um podcast especially if they had some type of career before within the entertainment community um yeah their podcast like everybody is a fucking podcaster stone cold steve austin is a fucking podcaster it's a great podcast but fucking shannon shaw is a football player you know what i'm saying Joe Button's a rapper, but he's been in the game, so it's kind of like, and hey, he's been saying this or whatever. He's been saying that sooner or later his friends is going to pop up. You know, Cameron and Mace are hilarious. Joe Button was maybe one of the original podcasters, too. I yeah. just want to put that out there. And he knew that this was coming. He knew this was coming. Joe Rogan is known for his podcast, but before this, he was a fucking UFC fighter slash comedian, stand-up comedian. I don't think he was that funny, but yeah. It's it's like like when, who do you, TV host. the only other people I know is Abba Preach or whatever that has been like I would say generally like is a podcast or uh, two podcasters that just from the mud they want celebrities they want nothing they really so you call them podcast well not really I don't know. Cause I'm, no, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking what your opinion is, so I understand. Like, yeah, I, I, I like those. Are the only thing close to I could say it could be uh, like podcasters or something like that, or content creators in, in general that you can get it out the mud, but then won't celebrities at first or whatever. All these, all the known podcasts right now are celebrities. Gilly and Wallow, they're celebrities. I mean, maybe more Gilly than Wallow, more, maybe less Gilly than anybody else, but. Shots fired. No, but that's that's exactly what it's been. It's been like celebrities that haven't been celebrities for a while that is like regaining that extra, that extra um, breath of life back into the. Um, I would say public persona again. You know what I'm saying? You know, like nobody was checking for Willie D. <laughs> like, like, nobody's been checking for Willie D. Oh, Willie D's. <laughs> I have no the, I have you, no disagreement. Like even when you were listening to the ghetto boys back in the day, you were listening to Scarface, the short nigga, and the other nigga. That's what we were describing the ghetto boys. As. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Y'all listen to y'all heard Lil Willie D rap. <laughs> y'all heard him rap before. He sound exactly how <laughs> he talks in regular day. Like y'all, he sound like an upset uncle that got into the liquor cabinet too long that's what he sound like or whatever over the, over his older years or whatever he's been trying as hard as to sound as intelligent as possible but at the end of the day will it be no nice. more talk no more talk will, will it be man i just feel like you need to say pause after you say his name hey, hey yeah you do kind of like puffy <laughs> period like come um, on man all right, this is what I'm gonna say. Um, I don't like my blunt while you. <laughs> I know I might have said too much. I apologize. No, no I you don't. fine. You fine. I have no issue with what you said. My my only thing is, uh, what I would say is that I don't think it's become oversaturated. I think it's become saturated. Yes, oversaturated. No. So what I mean by this is this: I think that. It has become saturated with people who are already celebrities. Like they're already famous. So they're going to get the most views and the most clicks because they're already people that people recognize. Right. But 
I don't think that everything we call podcast today is what an actual podcast is. Like, I think we have confused reaction people and content creators with podcasts. So, like, Abba and Preach, I would not consider them a podcast. I would consider them a content creation source. Okay. You they might do make it. content. They react to videos. But I don't think they're a podcast because they make 15 minute clips. To me, a podcast is something where a host or a, a group of hosts are having at least an hour long conversation, if not more. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the key there is conversation, not social commentary, not um, not them having a uh, that like a formal newscast or like uh yeah a formal like interview I, I, we're just having a like to me a podcast is like we're having a conversation about about reporting. this topic but it's not necessarily driven any which way or the third or the third excuse me i got hiccups um like when i watch i been preach they usually come in with a agenda. They have a social commentary that they're looking to make on whatever video video they're reacting to, and then they go off that. Excuse me, I'm sorry, y'all. I apologize for these hiccups, but I can't really control them. Oh. However, um, when you look at the Joe Budden podcast, you're looking at a two to three hour long conversation about whatever their guest is talking about or whatever they have found to talk about that week. That's a very different platform. And I think the problem is where it becomes oversaturated is when we start to combine these things. I think a lot of people combine reaction video people with podcasts. So now it's like this one monolithic thing. That and I true. think that I think that it's not so much oversaturated as it is people who are famous are going to automatically get preference. Right? So if this was a talk show, if this was a talk show space, right? And people start making talk shows. If 12 talk show people made talk shows, say we were one of those 12, right? We're not going to get the same attention as a Joe Budden or as a Oprah or as a Steve Harvey or Cat Will, like because these people are famous, they're already bringing an audience to whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is when it comes to podcasting, like there is a place for people who may be speaking to a group of people that do not subscribe to that particular viewpoint so like i may not be a football guy but if you're talking football from a place where i can understand it i'm gonna rock with you because these other dudes are saying shit that's over my head but you bad. are saying things in a way that makes sense to me so i think that like when you look at it's seven billion people on the world more than that obviously but I, yeah, eight billion now. It's up to that. I'm gonna say that it's not oversaturated because there's a million people that would like to listen to or that are looking for their voice within all of this chatter. I think the biggest problem is that the people who are famous can clutter that chat. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'm looking for my voice, but I keep getting distracted by. Joe Budden or Joe Rogan or <coughs> whatever the latest Joe of the week is. Excuse me, y'all. <coughs> <coughs> latest Joe of the week. I told y'all that I was a little uh under the weather. But when I tell you this, I, I mean, um, I don't think it's oversaturated. I think it's just a lot of famous people that are finding their audience and I think it's up to each independent podcast, as as, a, as us, you know, just like us, to find that voice 
within all of that. Because there's a million people that want to hear what we want to talk about. Just like there's a million people that want to hear what Joe Rogan talk about. Just like there's a million people that want to hear what Joe Budden talk about. It's just us finding those million people and finding a way to find them. Because there's podcasts I listen to, like uh, Get Your Balls Off, like um, Battle Rap Trap, like uh, Kev on stage when he does his, um, what you call it? Uh, damn, why, why is my brain going blank right now on him? Uh, That's it. It, Forty years old. Right. <clears throat> the Joe, he, the Joe, he do with Angel. If that makes sense, it, y'all probably have heard of it. But these podcasts, like, I didn't find them because of them being famous. I found them because they spoke to something that resonated with me, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna keep listening." So I think that the key to podcasting is in general like it's being organic and being real so like when 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 the people that do find you find you they find their voice in you if that makes sense but that's my opinion living vicariously uh to other people you relate to or just hearing people that like it might not be vicariously it's more like just this person says the shit that I feel too. They, this is more like a connection thing, like not vicariously as as in you're trying to live your life through me. It's more like I'm saying the stuff that you would say anyway, but you don't want to do a podcast, so I'm that voice for you. And I that may it, be vicariously. I may be saying the same shit, but in a different way. And I may just I, I realize I realize as I said that I realize as I said that out loud that that may be the same thing. But what I mean is like. I'm not living my life through you. I just, you, what you say resonates with me. That's the type of shit that I would, I would want to hear. And that's the type of conversation I would want to listen to as opposed to these other conversations where it may be over my head or like too much or like the topics that I don't even want to discuss. But the shit that you're talking about and the, sh- the way you're talking about it makes sense to me and I like it. So I don't know if that's vicariously or not. And that may be that may be it, but yeah. Oh, I might just want a reason to say vicariously because I like the word. Whichever one is true, I think that we are saying equally important things. Mm-hmm. Face mob, how do you feel about it? Celebrities need to move the fuck out the way. Um, when podcasting came out, Joe Buttons was one of the first one. Um, and at that point in time, even though he had a hit record out and all that other shit, I still wouldn't consider him a, a big name celebrity. So I consider him a pioneer in the game. I consider everybody else who is a so-called celebrity who came behind Joe Button realized the bag and just jumped in the game for a bag. A lot of them don't have any good content. A lot of them just, just duplicate what they've seen other people do. And because Willie G. Damn like, so did that. I just want to say that. You, I'm sorry. You feel me like you, you see the same content, the same people being interviewed. It, it, it's like a circuit in a cycle. So they're basically turning the podcast game and the podcast space into like a bull, a, a, a new bullshit news era or news space where instead of talking about real news, which the news doesn't even do anymore. They're talking about social content or bullshit content or bullshit arguments. Like, if you're going to have a podcast, like, be genuine and be unique in your lane. Talk about something that's genuine and unique to you. Like, you can gloss over the topics. Cool, because they may be interesting to you. Everybody wants to talk about what's going on in the media because and everybody wants to talk about what's going viral. That's no problem. But when you base that and that's that that's your whole basis, there's nothing true and genuine about it. it, it it's a carbon copy of everything else out there. And if you're a celebrity doing the same doing that, it, it, it's obvious you're out there for a bag. You have no love for the game. You're not out here trying to do podcasts. Like you came into it with with the money, trying to get more money, trying to flip it and treat it, treat it like 
another another product, another arrow, or just let me get my feet in here to get, get some more money. And then you have a lackluster performance in it. Fuck that. You got a lot of people out here with no names making good content, but they can't get no headspace or get get no no views or even get suggested in anything because these motherfuckers is in the way. I don't want no more suggestions for a million dollar worth of game. Don't give me no more suggestions with that bullshit. Point it out there. I'm cool with that. Give me some suggestions for some podcasts that I haven't heard of. It's, it's talking about some real life day to day shit that I may be actually experiencing. I'm tired of hearing celebrities getting interviewed about some bullshit. I, I'm not going to experience. I don't know how it is to ride on a yacht, and and nine times ten, I won't know how that feels to ride on a yacht in my lifetime. But I know how it is to pay motherfucking bills on a day to day basis. Let me hear motherfucking podcast talking about that shit. Let me interview a real motherfucker. Interview a nigga with a real ass job. I'm tired of these millionaires getting interviewed. And interview a nigga to make it fifty thousand dollars. Bring a nigga on making fifty thousand dollars. Let, let me hear some shit. He got the motherfuckers say some real life shit. I can be like, oh yeah, damn right. I, I remember that type of shit. I know that type. You feel me? Like some nigga real bad with. That's the type of shit I fuck with. Maybe it's just me. But when I look, when I hear for podcasts and I search for podcasts, that's what type of shit I look for. Some real down to earth type shit that I can actually be in tune with, or some conversation shit that it's gonna, gonna spark my interest and spark my brain make me actually think not no just no regular modern day carbon copy bullshit that this man that did this man that redid this man that redid the same questions in a different order the same questions that, fuck that fuck that yeah but once again this is just my opinion it's just my opinion maybe yeah, maybe i'm wrong for my opinion oh well am i am fuck it i like what i like Joe Budden has, has created a space where celebrities can come and and, and a lot of them try to copy him to, to the point where you have Mav Hopper on one episode or a couple episodes even even change the whole scenery of it of the whole his shit and it looked like Joe Budden said Joe Budden said like you changed the whole set and it looked like you was on the couches like Joe Budden shit. Carbon copy. I, I I like uniqueness. I, I I like people stay in their lane. When you create something, stay in your lane and create more for your lane. Widen your lane up. Create more lanes. Go from a two lane highway to a six lane highway by creating your own shit. Don't 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 see how somebody else did it. Like you know, I'm gonna do exactly what this man did, and, and I'm gonna replicate. No, stop replicating. Create the highest. Um form of flattery is imitation is what they say and that's stop that's flattering true. niggas stop yeah, flattering niggas. flattering sure. joe button another thing also another mm -hmm. thing about willie d <laughs> what? you beat right, willie so, d said it no because this should be stupid like like all right because you like, Hey, they be beefing on the on the damn thing just just to have some type of controversy and shit. He beef with Scarface one time just to have some fucking controversy and shit or whatever. And then Shannon Sharp has has been doing great with the Cat Williams interview. Like he, his yeah. is the highest viewed yeah. interview so far. I, or whatever. I love I love I love what Shannon Sharp does. And then. And then a couple of weeks later, because everybody's peeping the the um the views that Shannon Sharp get, this nigga pops out. Willie D pops out and say that basically he got like um uh like he got Cat Williams back in to say some more. And he shit. asked the same question. And not the even only that. new thing was the Ali Sadiq shit, and we already heard that from Ali Sadiq, and, and it doesn't really differentiate from each other. It's just. A different mm. perspective and and i actually like understand cat from that perspective especially if uh, being a person that likes his shit organized and the plan already set before i get to said plan do performance said plan and shit Absolutely. or whatever but like that interview from cat was like a couple of months before shannon dropped so you wasn't going to actually bring that shit out or you won't bring that shit out when you don't have nothing else left to like push out at the time, which you basically didn't. Or whatever. Like Scarface, okay, I can see Scarface being the, the driving force 
of of fans going to see a podcast with Scarface connected to it. But will it be? Will it be? Will it really? <laughs> Remember when um Keenan Ivory Wayans had a, a, a late night show? No, no. What the, what well, the at one yeah, point in time that? in history, Keenan Ivory Wayans had a late night show because they were giving out late night shows like hotcakes to they, everybody. They, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the other Wayans, the one the Wayans that started it all. All right. He had a late night show and they invited the ghetto boys to perform and Willie D freestyle. I remember this. Oh no. I'm 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 afraid to even go further on this. Exactly. If Willie D freestyling is not what I want to hear. Oh god. Oh my god, nigga. If you ever hear Willie D sound like a nigga that is way too old to be trying to do young shit doing young shit. That's that's what he sound like when he raps. Like he sound like an old nigga that's trying to hang with young niggas and just just cussing miscellaneously and shit like that. Like Willie D's rap style is comparative to Steve Harvey's comedy style. Like it's just a bunch of country shit really and I'm cuss in between freestyling is not what i want to hear like you already lost me when you said that <clears throat> exactly but this nigga be the one to be trying to freestyle and he ain't even the one that niggas want to hear like uh scarface i'll rock with but uh i don't want to hear what it be. yeah scarface is a classic it is a is a pressure <clears throat> in hip-hop <clears throat> <clears throat> He's but in the category all on his own. All right. So uh I'm glad we're talking about podcasts. When it comes to podcasts, right? I, I find that you got people like Bitcoin Rodney. You got people like uh Caesar Pena. You got people like uh him five hundred. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> um, what do y'all think about podcast payola? What do y'all think about having guests on that, like, we know are full of shit, but we don't ask them the questions that we really want to ask them because they paid us to be there? Well, let me go ahead first. I feel like this. You can have anybody on take the money if you want to but you have a responsibility to yourself and your own platform to question anything that comes out of anybody's mouth on your platform because at any at the end of the day whatever said on your platform you have a responsibility for or some responsibility for so before somebody gets on your platform and says some bullshit just because they paid you hey it's a way to question something and still get the same answer by asking a question in one way than another. And get the same answer. Police do what the people already got damn time. All you gotta do is use your brain. Sure. They paid you not to ask them this question. Okay. I can ask you that question a different type of way. They do it on the SATs all the time. But if your main goal is to get paid and not give a fuck about what you put out, you can take your money. Your platform might be tarnished and you might be seen a certain way, but that may be what you're looking for, too. Yeah. But if you have any inkling of integrity to yourself, your platform, your listeners, question everything that's said on your platform from your guests by your host. Question it. Why not? The question could lead to even better content than just the bullshit that's being spewed. The answer is that the, the answer is gonna open up more doors than just listening to some bullshit. A lot of scammers come on here and say some shit. People are like, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Ask them how many times they've tried that own method and how many times did it take them to try that before it worked. Ask them, do they have any people that saying it don't work? 
ask them about the negative things. All I hear is the positive things about what you're saying, but what's the other side of it? Somebody tell you there is no other side up, oh, is instantly something wrong. Because it's something fucked up, or so it's a bad side to everything in life. That's why they say you got to take the good with the bad. But when someone never wants to tell you the bad, the bad is fucked up. Real fucked up. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, I think one of the biggest issues in podcasting isn't that it's saturated, is that it's, it's full of people who are able to pay to be on your podcast, right? Like, so I think that we need to get rid of the podcast payola. And if people don't know what podcast payola is, uh, it's basically the situation where a podcast is taking money for this person to be on their podcast so they don't ask the questions that are necessary. And I think that's the situation with a lot of podcasts. I think there's a lot of people who want to be celebrities who may have taken a picture with celebrities or whatever the case may be, but they're not necessarily qualified to come on your podcast and talk about the thing they're talking about. So like, if you're not a financial advisor, I don't really want to hear your finance, your financial advice, but I'm going to listen to you because this podcast that I do rock with has put you on there. So you get, scammers and grifters and people like a brother polite that's on the breakfast club or a brother or him 500 that's on earn your leisure or um even a umar johnson that's on joe button like i don't need to like i, I would rather you give me a person that's organically i wanted to talk to this person so now i have actual questions that are lined up to question what whatever it is they do as opposed to a person that's paid to be on your podcast and you now are giving them questions that are lined up to not inform anybody about anything but more ingratiate yourself to and make yourself more acquiescent to the person that is speaking on your podcast at the moment. So like a him 500 should have never got a platform because if, when you break down what he's talking about, you see the scam. When you see a person like Bitcoin Rodney, that's on breakfast club, Charlemagne or envy should have asked him something. Same with Caesar Pena. Like, like these things are not when you're intelligent, I will say this when you're intelligent, these things are not hard to point out. I think the problem is that you have a bunch of podcasts that are run by these famous people that because of their platform, they promote these ideals or allow people space to spew these ideals that are not necessarily factual or backed in anything. It's just, well, they paid us to be here. We're going to ask them questions that make them look good. And I think that's the biggest problem in podcasts today, like more than being oversaturated. I think it's a problem of like people being compromised because of money or influence of the people that they're bringing on. Yeah. What are y'all thoughts on, on podcast payola and like these people that are coming on podcasts, allowing to spew their rhetoric, but without any challenge? In, in every form of corporate America, there's some type of payola. It was just about, it's just a matter of time where we could spot it and, and point it out so we can get rid of it that, or whatever. So my, my thing is, I feel like we just now at the stage of being able to spot, hey, that these are scammers. Which these fools are more annoying than them AI commercials that be popping up on YouTube saying, hey, I'm stupid for not getting my 64,000, from the government this week. Come on. Or whatever. Oh, my God. Those shits are annoying. And, and, and it's a Steve Harvey one. I think that's why I got a beef with Steve Harvey because I've seen that shit. It's, it's a Steve Harvey one, but you could 
you could tell it's an AI made Steve Harvey. Like it's it's a it's a watered down Steve Harvey, which is very funny because his comedy is so watered down. Anyway. <laughs> and, <laughs> anyway. It's it's just bound to happen. And when you have like that when you have a group of people, there's always a person that's extra as hell that they just because they feel like and they they believe in themselves and they have the charisma or whatever depend even though that they don't really do anything or any type of good or have any really real talent or they might just have some knowledge of some shit or whatever and they mm-hmm. use that as a way into because they it's like they find they study the loopholes of the game to find ways to scam in general like you have to be a person that just generally think that way like that's just your go-to mode of thinking in general is to find the scam and everything or whatever Mm -hmm. these these people are is a lot is a lifestyle so it's it's more like when you have platforms like this that feed they're like they're the equivalent of the uh the medicine man in the 1800s with the with the fake you know snake oil cure the cure all and everything selling placebos and whatnot like they they're that for like financial reason i guess financial uh people that have like financial struggles in, in general or, or whatever like they're always instead of you know doing the the hardships or like just doing the hard research into an industry to get money or whatever people are always trying to find the scam and everything whatnot so i think it's one of those things that it couldn't be avoided because in every industry we have there is a person that's trying to find the scam in in, in general but it's it's right. also important right. to go ahead and even if you are a platform that have given them given them like the space to to introduce themselves into the world and you have a big platform it's good to have the due diligence that when you see these people doing wrong or whatever that you put them out you know what i'm saying maybe go you know maybe they'll be the next donkey of the day or not the throw shots but yeah it's like like it is it's it's the I, I just in general is always the bigger platform's responsibility of putting these people on because until they actually go on a joe button on a breakfast club uh this that and the third is the only time when they actually get the validation to make it seem like they're legit you know it's only when they're friends with a dj envy that they can get the validation that they they can to promote their scam very much and it's in and it's the general public's due diligence just like in everything buyer beware like damn right i think that's the biggest point like it's not a lot of buyers that are being where like it's just buyers that are just like oh well this person said they're good so i'm gonna roll with it but it's like there's no discernment there's no um intelligent peer reviewing there's no let me check to see if what you say actually makes sense after is, i listen to this podcast that sounds like the culture of this era or whatever everybody finds their echo chamber or whatever and a lot of times the echo chamber is a podcast nowadays the echo chamber that screams out every fact that sounds good to them or whatever the facts that and it might not be all the facts it's just the facts that you could put together to actually create some type of rebuttal or bias rebuttal to make it seem like that your bias is justified pretty much so like it's it's those people that just get stepped into those echo chambers and then they they get a following of people that actually believe 
and the bullshit that they say, or want to just not even want, just want to believe so hard that they would accept not all the truth. You're getting facts, but just because you're getting facts, you don't, you're not getting all the truth. I think somebody said that shit before, and I don't remember who the fuck said that. I think it was Cat Williams, but I don't know. Man, like people using a lot of facts out there to make this seem like they're truthful. I, I but, think that uh, it comes down to intelligence. Got to be more intelligent when it comes to our sources. Like there used to be a time when, before Wikipedia, where we would check our sources. I understand that this says this, but let me cross reference it with another source to make sure that both sources say the exact same thing, and then I'll put it in my book report. Right. I think now what you're saying is people are very comfortable with letting whoever tell them that this source is valuable and then they just roll with it. They don't double check the source to see if it makes them feel good. Makes makes sense as well. They just roll with it like, all right, Charlemagne said that this this dude is good, so I'm going to roll with it. Or Joe Budden said this dude is good, so I'm going to roll with it. As opposed to like, let me see what if this person what is is actually making sense let me see if there's another place that i can get the same exact information and it still makes sense was was that you face that said that in your truth hurts short about facts and truth people don't want facts. people putting feelings over facts i, I feel that. like this is good so i'm gonna roll with it mm-hmm what he said is facts over feelings. I re- I remember that. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's a situation of this person makes me feel good, so I'm gonna roll with it with his with his facts, even if his facts are not actually facts. Uh, mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is like I can lie to you and say something is true. I can tell you that uh, two times two is six. But unless you go back and double check that with somebody else, you will roll with that just if you fuck with me. Mm-hmm. But that don't make it true. It just make it what I told you. And I think that the problem is we keep running into these situations where like people are telling us stuff, but we're not double checking to make sure what they told us is right. We're just rolling with, or you told us this and you were on a platform that I trust. So I'm going to roll with it. No, nobody likes proofreading. Shit, I don't like proofreading. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'd be I done with the report and I'd be so mad that I had to write and type all that shit and I gotta look over it again. I'd be tired too. But nobody likes proofreading and context checking context clues and stuff like that. But it's vital. It it is vital for human society. We learned it in school for a reason. But y'all like being dumb. It is cool being dumb. It's no, cool, it's being, cool dumb. being ratchet. So uh, I ask y'all, is, is ratchet is being today's ratchet being yesterday's ghetto, but just evolved or devolved? Um, I. I'll let Pace go first. You can go first, Pace. All right. Well, I feel like a lot of things are magnified by the day and times by technology. So things that started off, I guess you could say it's the evolution of of ratchet or whatever, from from lizard to walking, from fish to lit land walking lizard to primate with two feet or whatever and two legs and shit like that it's it's the simple fact that because there has been a magnifying lens on things that are provocative and a, and exotic and different from normal everyday life and people are addicted to controversy because the simple answer is usually the right answer and life is boring but you know there's safety in the in the boring life there's 
there's peace in a boring life. But the topic right now is that because of that addiction to it and increased by social media and technologies fitting all effect on the drug of attention. Attention is like the most deadliest drug right now out here in these streets. And 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 the technology is now and social media and the and the culture of social media in which you gotta like stuff, you gotta post stuff and hope that somebody likes it so you make feel good of yourself. It's the self-esteem, that social media esteem, you know, like because of that, it has increased the magnet and magnify what we used to know as ghetto into the new slang term of ratchet or whatever. Because every time you see something ratchet, you can look at that shit and then it will, you can have a slight memory of some ghetto shit you remember from the past or whatever. And you, in your mind, you'll be like, man, back then they were just doing this. But now, man, they're doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like back then they were just wearing short shorts. These bitches is naked in the club and they ain't stripping. They just in that bitch naked. I mean, it's a fishnet outfit and she got like little patches over her titties, but she's still naked. Yo, I'm so sick of the 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 outfit where it's lace, but it's draw. You really just got on draws and a bra. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like I and this may be me. <coughs> Excuse me coming from an older perspective, but I remember a day when like you had to wonder about what a woman had. I hate lace and that that I was the sexy pill. Like I, 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 I used to like that. Like I don't know what you got on. So because of that, your jeans and your t-shirt make me even more horny because I'm like, oh what the fuck do you got on to that? If you if you look like this in this <coughs> what's under there? I remember the days of gauchos. If y'all remember them. Um, oh, and, yeah. And, and sundresses. Where it was, gauchos. everything is covered up completely. There is nothing showing. Up to the knee. But it's a lot moving around in there. Yeah, What's in there? Is. What is that? Happiness. I remember, Enjoy. like, just wondering, like, hmm, I bet it's some sweet stuff under there. It's provocative. Now I literally see what's under there. It makes me. I don't. I don't have to guess, and because I don't have to guess, I'm not as interested. It's like, it's like porn overload. Like I've seen like, too much for me to like, care about what you got on, because the other the woman was naked too. With the gauchos and the sundress, I see the body, but I don't see all everything with it or whatnot. I go on Instagram. And then I see all of your flaws. And a lot of those flaws I could have ignored when it's like nighttime and we got the lights down and like it's just next click playing. I ignore that, you know, the the the, the cottage cheese cellulite on the bottom left hand side right there. You know, I, and I that. actually like it. But if yeah. I see it early, I'm not as intrigued. You know, like I can wait, you know, I cannot know that you had the tiger stripe. On, on on your ass, whatnot, and I just okay, happen to think that uh, that I actually like Pat. Uh, I like I like Pooper and uh, and type like, stripes. I, and I like well, I like, personally think that a tiger is my sexy. is my spirit animal. That I want to I want to see I, my favorite animal of all time is a white Siberian tiger. So me, you me talking too. about like, right. that, that's my Well, all right, uh, ma'am, ma'am, you yeah. done caught my attention. But I don't like, want to see it on every woman, because then yeah. by the time I get to you, you ain't now special. You, yeah, you would put in a category. You put in a category at that moment. You know what I'm saying? Like when you, when you, when I don't know, and we get into that moment of knowing, you know what I'm saying? Knowing each other, getting to know each other, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, and 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 I hit that night, and then I wake up in the morning, and the sun is hitting that ass, and then I find out that you got tiger stripes on it. Oh, you become a new being, a new being that I have not seen before, 
or whatever. I had nothing to do with anything. Just uh, I had a reflection moment. <laughs> Goddamn ghetto ass, ratchet ass motherfuckers. Uh, it's an increase. The problem what is it's an increase of people actually wanting and thinking that being ratchet is a good thing. This is yeah. a quick way for that's, me to that's get the, that, that, That's the difference. That's the that's my biggest difference. Um, like, like it used to be ghetto, ratchet and ghetto was not a good thing. It was like yeah. that was the girl you didn't want to holler at. That was the dude that was like, oh man, here he come. And now the it's like these things are being glorified. Ignorance. Oh my Indeed. bad. Like, no, like you said a, people, you said a whole mouthful, Paul. The people, the people that were ghetto back there, the only reason why they were ghetto is because they were brought up that way and they didn't know no other way than that. Because we didn't have like TVs in our faces all the time, like 1984 warned us. Like, yeah, like no big difference in being ghetto yeah. by circumstance and ratchet on purpose. Yeah, but when you're looking like that ghetto is genuine and authentic. But when you're looking at a TV screen and you see somebody acting ghetto and ratchet, you never seen it before. That's not your natural personality, but it appeals to you. And you think that's the way that people are supposed to act. That is a problem. That is a mental problem. That's not you. You know what I'm saying? That is you got a venom symbiote and put that shit on became carnage you ain't even that's not even you that, that, that's that's not nigga you you are a cook man you you know what i'm saying you you can chef up that um chef boy any creme brule or whatever the fuck you you got a calling and culinary arts and shit that doesn't mean you got to pull up the pyrex and got down <laughs> And try to act like you were. That's not your calling, man. No. I totally. totally. It's the, the biggest difference with Ratchet and Ghetto of yesteryear and today. Today, it's glorified. It's made to be a thing that is to be popularized. Back in the day, it was like, why are you ghetto? Like, come on, bro. We're trying to be better than this. We're trying to get out of the ghetto. We don't want to stay there. And I think real nigga time and all of these other phrases and, and, and mantras have led to like people now wanting to be a part of something that is like something that we were trying to get out of in the night. Now that we're out of it, we have kids that are in the suburbs that are like trying to go back to it. And it's like, Cult. That wasn't what we wanted. That that's not the cool shit. Yeah, you're so cultural the appropriating agenda, ignorance. So uh, far the agenda. The more you glorify ignorance from one community and make it look like it's cool, the more they're young are gonna try to imitate what they think is cool, which is the ignorance. But what they didn't count on, it wasn't reverberating outside of the community. And now you have other cultures imitating the ignorance as well with their youth. And it's just taking a hold. The island Stop boys. Paying we're the island boys. Ignorant motherfuckers to be ignorant. Like, like you are insulting me because you're acting like one of my goofy ass relatives that's that's like that we don't even let it off of ignorance. You know, we we don't we don't go nowhere in public with this motherfucker. And you're acting like him, her, or whatever they Amen. identify as, because because you think it's cool, whatnot. You're insulting me. I didn't want to. I don't. I didn't want to chill with them. Why do I want to see you act like them? And you ain't even them. You like you ain't even close to them. None of the none of the people in your family act like them. I can look at you and know for a fact that none of your relatives, Susan, is not doing that shit. Sukiana, no, yes. Susan is not. Sukiana, yes, Susan is not doing that. Not at Susan all. Susan graduated from college. 
Mm-hmm. Now, it is a possibility that after she graduated from college or whatever, and she went out in the field and realized that she wasn't making the money she wanted to make or whatever, and she started watching Instagram and saw Sukiyana and other people and saw that being ratchet could get you to all kinds of uh, attention that you think you want and whatnot, and Susan turns into a Sukiyana. She don't even have That's use her thing. name. People don't realize that Sukiyana, she famous already. She already got her bag. Mm-hmm. But now That's when she's reaching plan. 30, 35, she's now looking at like life like, oh, I want what I should have been chasing when I was 20-something. And I think that's the scary part. It's like the ratchet has become so popular that the average 18-year-old or 25-year-old is looking at doing things that we would normally frown upon. Mm -hmm. But they're looking at that as a viable source of money, but they don't realize they're saturating the market, as we talked about earlier. Like, if everybody is doing OnlyFans, your OnlyFans ain't going to make you no money because I can see the same thing from a person that is actually famous. Yeah, I don't even got. I don't need to see this from you. I don't care about what you're talking about. Now, with a podcast, is a little different because you have people who are from different walks of life. So I may not meet a a failed banker that's now poor, and he's teaching me about financial literacy and how that should have gone. But with OnlyFans, it's literally just nakedness and fucking. If Mm -hmm. I've seen one woman fuck and she has a similar ass to yours, then I don't see what the big difference is anymore. Mm -hmm. So now it's just, I'm not going to pay for yours. I'm going to keep paying for the famous person because she got the same shit you got. But I know her. Mm -hmm. I've seen her before. I remember her. She made me turned on in that movie I liked. She made me like her in that show that I liked. So I watch her. Y'all not even buying different asses. Y'all are t- screenshotting asses Man, off of Instagram so and taking it to Dr. Miami and asking for the, the, the Kim Kardashian special. Yo, when I tell you that women look so the same, I can't tell three. half of them. Like when they put celebrities up on a board, I, I'm very confused as to who's who's who because they all look alike. Because they build a they got the same lips, the same body, the same face, the same. Hairstyle, like, I don't know who you are anymore. Yeah, it used to be it. like each woman was different, so they made you like them because they were different. Now it's everybody look alike, so I don't know who to like. I might be thinking I'm liking you, but I'm liking the homegirl. But y'all look alike, y'all built alike, y'all got the same lips, y'all got the same hair, y'all got the same face. All y'all bodies look like six degrees of separation. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, no, nigga, like you know that, know that that um that theory that you're six people away from somebody famous or something. Oh, I thought you were talking about that Will Smith movie. Oh shit, is that a movie? That might be a goddamn movie. I don't know. Right. I don't. I don't be watching gay movies and shit. So <laughs> that's out of ignorant. I ain't gonna say nothing about it, but it damn sure uh, sounds a little ignorant. But I understand. I understand your point. I do understand your point. I, I'm not a fan of. Uh, don't give me what you gave. I didn't even mean it like that. I just be like, I, I just. <laughs> Maybe I did. Maybe I did. Hey, I ain't mad at you for not watching game. That's okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. If you knew intimately about what that was about, then that, that would be my problem. That is true. The fact that you don't know is a good thing because people know I way too much. to be that. an expert in those situations. No, I really will decline that knowledge. Yes, yeah. I will be ignorant in that. Yes, yeah. because it's not my goddamn business. Indeed. All the respect Indeed. for people's privacy. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Yep. Um. <laughs> well, we come to excuses. Um, there are a group of people that are joining our heritage, uh, that are joining our 
uh, population right now, and that's called the migrants. What's y'all thought on the migrants? Uh, you know, right. Them motherfuckers are getting too much. Being bused from Texas, and they even called the day out of school for their kids to allow the migrants to be in the schools and have a place to stay for the day. How do y'all feel about this? What's y'all thought? My money, my tax dollars provide for my kids to go to school, not for migrants to be sheltered in these damn schools. You'll shelter a migrant before you shelter an American homeless. That don't seem fucked up and wrong. You'll send aid and, and military money and billions and millions of dollars over to Ukraine to help them fight, but you won't help motherfuckers over here in America fight hunger. Amen. I don't give a fuck if you put up a wall. I don't give a fuck what you do. If you want to put these motherfuckers, put them in some of these abandoned buildings you got around here. These vacant motherfucking homes you got around here. Put them in them shits. Do actually actually yeah. do something that's gonna help the community. Stop doing shit that's hindering the community and, and, and things that is giving aid. I can give two shits less about a goddamn migrant. Where they shove that. As long as you ain't hindering on my child's education or hindering on my life. You taking my babies out of school for some remote learning, that, that's going to alter my motherfucking life. I got to be at home with their ass to make sure they ain't doing the shit. Right. We already see what remote learning did to kids when they had to do it during COVID. You stunted these kids got their education, stunted their social skills, caused mental issues. Now you want to voluntarily do this shit for some goddamn money? You, you want to bust these motherfuckers somewhere, bust their ass right back to where the fuck they came from. The but when the bus comes, you y'all get right back on that bus, take right back where they got from. Y'all better play pit, pong with them motherfuckers. Bust them here, bust them there, bust them here, bust them right back where the fuck they came from. Y'all just accepting them because we're sanctuary cities. No, nah, it ain't no sanctuary when you affecting the people who are already in your city. That 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 ain't cool. And y'all allowing it for votes. Fuck your votes. I, and, and I'm one of them people that's like. I I agree that migrants should have a place in this country. Like, if you find a better place to live, I'm never going to down that. But when you start to infringe upon the rights and the legalities of the people that's already there, that's where my line draws. Like, you can't do that. You can't take kids out of school that live here, they've been born here, they're raised here, they, they've known nothing but this school, and tell them you can't come to learn because we have a group of people that are not even from here. That is not right to me. Uh, Pat, what you think? You know, no. Fuck that shit. In my um in my younger years, I would probably be a lot more concerned though, in general about people and situations, but no, I, I really actually feel like this is a strategic move to piss people off in some type of way or form or fashion. I really feel like, like I just feel like you got to do more than have Democrats and stuff like that to okay something like this in an area. I, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's... It just it just seems way too ridiculous. Either that, or it's just the failing of I have no better plan than this right now. I can't think of no other better plan than this. I don't know where to put these motherfuckers and put them in the school. But it's a lot of empty no, spaces don't put them in America. In school. Yeah. I feel like it's a lot of empty spaces in America right now that are not being used. That if we really wanted to address the migrant culture. And we can put them there. There are yeah, states where the population is less Every than a Every town got a shut down wall. Yeah, that's true. But they want to put them in a place where they can keep an eye on them. And you can keep an eye on them there. That's my thing. Like, if you're going to let them in, let them in. And let them in fully to the full rights of American citizens and make them pay tax. Have them give them jobs, exactly. put, them in, put them in empty spaces that allow for them to grow and have their families and do whatever their business is. But my line draws, my, like my line always is where somebody else's rights are infringed upon. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with that. Like I don't want to 
hurt somebody else to make myself great. I, I'd rather just make myself great. And I don't necessarily need to infringe upon the rights of somebody else to do that. Like, there's ways around that in the law to accomplish whatever it is that you're accomplishing uh, as a Democrat or a Republican or whatever else, but while still maintaining the sanctity of the fact that you have millions and millions of people here in America that are already here, they paid their dues, they've raised their families, and now you're taking them out of their space to allow for this person. That's that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't want you to go somewhere so I can have another host. If we get another host, cool, but I'm not about to sacrifice my brothers in order to facilitate this new person that arrived on the scene like i'd rather just put this person in their own space and let them grow as they gonna grow uh, i think all our politicians are dumb but not all of them the ones that actually speak out on the bullshit, they're obviously not dumb but i think it's just a bunch of regular people that found some type of way this to scam their way into having people believe in them, just like the scammers on YouTube and on in podcasts. That's what and I'm saying. That's what they're about. That, that's all it is. All of them, every last one of these people, these these politicians that get these votes and stuff like that or whatever, they're all the equivalent of that medicine man. They're all the guy, the guy that knows the Bible up and down, but he just be saying stuff to justify the fuckery that he say he do or whatever, because he knows yeah. the scriptures. That's exactly what that's what they are like all these people. And yeah, like it's it's no it's. It's like what Faith said it before. It's, it, it, truth hurts. There is no easy answer to this. There's no, uh, it, it's just some solutions where it, they're not pretty. They are not pretty. Like we should be talking to their government and saying like, why do y'all not got y'all shit in order where we gotta go and clean up y'all bullshit? Correct the mundo. Yeah. You hit it on the head. I, I, I really believe in that. Like, like it's it's uh man, it's just irresponsibility on world le leaders in in this situation. Like us as citizens can't say can't do nothing but voice our opinion uh, in general. But as far as an immediate result and an immediate solution. These people are dumb, man. These are, like I said, it's a culture and society of people that, um, that people that find echo chambers that make them feel good for being stupid and they think they know everything. And being that they got them, think they know everything or whatever, they don't learn anything. So they come stupid. And some of them actually become politicians. And some of them are being that they don't have no god dang resume of actually solving a problem in situations like this where there is no other there's no benefit out of it we need to solve the problem they have no idea that's that's what i feel like whatever and this my uh, why we can't send their ass out the country they came from out the country Send their ass back out a country, just somewhere else. Get a big ass tugboat, put their ass on the tugboat, and then set that big sail for a country. We got AI. You ain't gotta have no captain. They got autopilot. Send the GPS, put that bitch on sail to a country, and just let that bitch sail. Nobody gonna give an immigrant a Tesla boat though. <laughs> put them bitches on the boat, lock the damn cat, lock the goddamn cabin. Shit, they ain't gotta be allowed in the cabin. Lock that bitch. With all the technology these days, it's possible. 
But motherfuckers just don't want to have a bad image. Just, oh, we want to be the caring. We want to be the caring and accepting. Well, fuck being caring and accepting. Look out for your own people. Help your economy survive and improve. You ain't doing that now. You're taking on more freeloaders when we already got a bunch of freeloaders. We got a country filled of homeless people. Some who don't want to get jobs and don't want to improve themselves. Some who do. For those who do, provide aid and help these people the same way you're helping these goddamn migrants who've been bussed around the country for free bus tickets and all this other shit. Giving these people free free places, free food, free, 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 fucking free. It ain't shit free for me. It ain't shit free for these motherfuckers out here who was really trying to get it. I pay taxes like 90-something percent of motherfucking Americans out there. Let me correct that, because I know some a lot of motherfuckers don't pay taxes. I'm going to go 80% of motherfuckers out who do pay taxes. Pay tax. There you and go. I should have my, and I should know that my tax dollars are being used for the right things by the to by the people I'm paying taxes to. If not, I shouldn't have to pay taxes. It should be optional. If you're not going to be using it to what you say you're going to be using it for, you're not using it for aid in the community. You're using it for foreign aid and more foreign aid, and ain't nobody foreign aid us. Don't give a fuck about them people. They ain't here. They not here. What you said on my What what what? Say it. Let them figure it out. What the fuck? It's all a plan. It's all a plan. But but the, the sad thing is, whatever the bigger plan is. They got it so convoluted and so shadowed and so covered up that we can't really see it until it's too fucking late. It's a reason why no one's shipping these motherfuckers back out the country. It's a bigger reason why. There's a bigger reason why. It's a reason why it's going right under everybody's nose and we not even think about it. Election year coming up. When y'all, when these people come up and they're actually given citizenship, what what are they counted at? They damn sure won't be up. What, what, what will y'all count these people at? What will you categorize these people at? How will they sway the census? What will you place these people at at the end of the day to sway the money? Because the census controls a lot of where a lot of aid and government funding and a lot of shit goes to. That people didn't fucking know. There's a it's a bigger plot and a bigger plan. But we're so busy looking at everything else and focusing on one issue about these motherfuckers being here, which is the biggest issue. That the bigger issue behind why they're here and they're not leaving and no one's wanting them to leave or forcing them to leave in government and the president ain't really saying shit on top of all that. Shit anyway. it, it, it's something bigger. And it's down the road. It, it, it ain't nothing that's going to transpire this year, next year. It's down the road. Where people going to forget about them even coming in the country. Something going to happen. Keep your eyes, motherfucker. Keep, keep your eyes moving. Now, I ain't going to say that bullshit. Stay woke, bullshit. Fuck staying woke. Keep your eyes moving side to side. Stay aware, <coughs> motherfucker. Shit. Stay aware. Keep your eyes on the on, on going side to side. Make sure you know what's going on around you at all fucking times. Cause shit getting sneaky out here. Yeah. It is. Um yeah. Mouthful right there. Um, I think the motherfuckers can come to Atlanta. Open. <clears throat> if, if these immigrants can come to Atlanta and get some of these fast food jobs and actually get my order right, br bring your ass. I'm tired of these motherfuckers up here. I'm only fucking up my goddamn order. Personal issues. Coming on out. Stephen T. Post. I think uh, the biggest takeaway we take away from the night is just like be yourself, be authentic, be organic to whatever your brand is. <clears throat> if you're a brand, if you're a migrant, I shouldn't see you in the spaces of the people who are citizens. Those two things don't go together. I, I want to see you in a place that matters. Yeah, yeah. 
Get yourself together so you can go back. That part. That part. Um, yeah. Y'all have any black business for the week? Hell no. Send us money. <laughs> That's my black. If you happen to have YouTube, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I have, I do have, I do have something. To say. I do have something to say. <laughs> Go ahead. My black I don't have a black business, but I have some something about black business. Don't just support a business because it's black. Let it be a good black business doing good business. Because there's a lot of black businesses out there that do shady bullshit and try to mask it. They bullshit with man. You know how it is, man. You know what? Fuck that. Business is business, and business should be good. I don't know how it is. You know how it is for me. Amen. Amen. Exactly. You feel me? So support good black business. Good upstanding black business. Not these scamming ass motherfuckers out here trying to get money just because they black and they're gonna prey on the community. Well, I can do this in the community because I know I'm gonna get money because I'm gonna just say it's a black black business. Uh Uh-uh. That shit ain't flying no more. New year, new shit. I don't have no good black businesses this week. No. Only good black business I can think of is the Partners Podcast. Hold on. Before you get into that, man, I just do want to salute. Uh, one black business that I will support is Constantly Elevating Beyond Obstacles. That's Sebo. Uh, y'all see I got the hoodie on. I got the whole sweatsuit. Uh, if y'all have a chance to check it out, you can check it out online on Facebook. Just type in Constantly Elevating Beyond Obstacles. Um, you can also look at it in Douglasville, Georgia. It's on Main Street. Um, it's at the Be Beautifully True Studio and Gallery, and it is a dope brand uh, ran by a brother You're that I know personally. Yeah. Yes, I have. I have. Yeah. I have. I've, I've said this information before. Um, but yeah, if y'all can support that, that would definitely help. That's a black brother that I know Be for a fact is just trying to do good for his uh, kids. And uh, he makes good outfit. Uh, I've had this sweat too for a minute now. Uh, it's been washed. It's been rewashed. It's been rewashed. It's been rewashed, and it, it is still rocking. Um, it is the one other brand outside of the Partners brand and AC AC uh, eighty three that I would actually suggest to y'all. <coughs> so if y'all get a chance. Please support that. You can look it up on Facebook, constantly elevating beyond obstacles. Um, you will you will immediately see like a bunch of posts with the different outfits, different uh masks. They got hoodies, sweatsuits, women's outfits, ski masks, like whatever you want, just like us. They they got it. So fuck with them. Um, but yeah, other than that, man, it's definitely a oversaturation of bullshit brands. So if you ain't gonna fuck with SIBO. Then go ahead and fuck with your boys, the partners, man. Um, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you get fo- follow us on all social media platforms. Make sure you listen to the podcast as much as you can. Uh, if you can listen to it longer than 30 minutes, that would be amazing. It actually helps us on the watch time hours, and we try to get monetized. Um, if you see a short that resonates with you from us, please make sure you react to it. Make sure. Sh- Make sure if you have an alternative thought, even like it, it, it's not the thought that it, it really is the thought that counts. Let me let me take that. It's the thought that counts. So if you have a thought that might not even resonate or agree with us, but that goes along with our conversation, post it. Say something about it because it allows us to then interact with you, and it also increases our engagement. Um, if you want merch, if you want outfits. Uh, gear, whatever the case may be that is partners related. Face, how can they get that? You go to the goddamn stove. What's the stove? Oh, rtrackclothing.com. Oh, rtrackclothing.com. I always need to tell you where you gotta go because you should have been going in the first damn place. You should have been with the damn stove. But if you ain't been yet, it's rtrackclothing.com. A R. T-R-E, clothing.com. And over here with the partners, we don't spell clothing for people. But if you go to the store, we do offer you a 20% off discount by just going to the store and getting a discount code off the top of the page. 
If you go to the store, you get if you, you get twenty percent off just by going to the store. How about that? And we all like a discount. Walmart you know, won't do that for you. We niggas, we like a good discount. That's and, how and, indeed. And once you've gotten your entreeclothing.com, that's your AC83 gear or your partner's gear, please make sure you post it to your social medias. And if you would like to follow us on any social media, Pat, how can they do that? Um, you can look on the bottom of the screen and you can also go to at T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's usually... All of our social medias, including Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch. What am I missing? One? What? Which one I'm missing? Uh, Facebook. If Facebook. you want to go there, just yeah. face pat all the partners. That's indeed all who we are in uh, Facebook. Indeed, indeed, man. Please make sure y'all support. If you liked anything, if you resonated with it, if, if any of these conversations that we've had tonight. Make you want to continue that conversation, please do so in the comments below. We look forward to chatting with you, and we do actually respond to your comments, whether you agree with us or disagree with us. We will respond to your comments, so you're not having a conversation alone. You are actually having a conversation with us. And uh, yeah, man, uh, as always, I have been one third of the partner. I'm your boy, Tiz. Excuse my being under the weather. Excuse my coughs and my uh, all that good stuff. But I appreciate y'all rocking with us. And I've been along with. Greetings, salutations, and good vibes to everyone. I am the other third of the partners. I am the Padawan. And I would like to say uh, to that one chick that showed me that video, you are very talented. Very talented. And I've been along with. I don't know if he's still with us, but uh, your boy Pat, your boy Fakes is, is there, and uh, we love him, and we appreciate him for, you know, being the other third of the partners, and with all three of us that makes the partners, and uh, I don't know what Pat is talking about, but uh, apparently he got a good video, so I hope he shares the video in the group chat, and uh, <laughs> if he does, video in the group chat. We'll talk about that on the next podcast. Uh, face is back. And, uh, yeah, I'll let him face in the motherfucking place. We love y'all, man. Y'all have a great week. Thank y'all for joining us. It's always been a pleasure. Peace, bitches! You got to train the true boys. Make you stay tough in this rude voice. Mm.